getting his story out at all is important because he always wanted to be an inspiration to young people and to have overcome the odds that he has is just um, the kind of thing you can't buy. Last week on the 23rd, we celebrated 40 years since he passed. And today we're fighting some of the same fights. When you look back at his legacy and looking forward to what we're going through right now, what are you hoping that this film, how would it resonate with the audience? I'm hoping that people have a different respect for African-American achievement, African-American leadership. When he became the first African-American member of the American Institute of Architects in 1923, he thought he was opening the doors for other people. Today, 98 years later, 97 years later, there's still less than 2% African-American members in the American Institute of Architects and 0.3% black women. Anything we can do to inspire other people, to inspire young people who think they can't be an architect. I mean, I today still meet young people, but I go talk to kids who say we never knew there was an African-American architect or black architect. And for him, he certainly grew up in Los Angeles, no role models. He was born here in 1894. I think it seems like an, um, a career that is beyond them for some reason, you know? I feel like they don't know how to access it, even if they're interested. Do you think that could be a problem? Well, they don't because it's not taught in schools. It's not even taught at USC, which was his school. And so when you don't teach it and kids don't have access to it, what can we say? Well, all I can say is thank you so much for sharing information with them. And I just really learned so much watching this documentary. I am just honored to, to meet you. Thanks again for being here. People will see this documentary that read the three books I did on him. I know that. Can you tell us about your books um, and how to get them? Probably out of print library or, or Amazon. Um, the first one was way back in 1993. It's called Paul Williams, A Legacy of Style. Then I did a children's book on him called The Well and the Way. And then 2012, I did Paul Williams' Classic Hollywood Homes. See, I needed to know all of that stuff. So thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, great. They'll be on Amazon. Okay. If not, they'll be around. We'll get them. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully. Library, Thank whatever. You so much. Sure. Thank you. Well, congratulations. I love the documentary. There's so many um, things you come across as a producer. What was it about this subject and this documentary you felt needed to be told? First of all, this man's story of accomplishment, he overcame so many odds against him. And not only did he achieve a level of sophistication and success that most people never achieve, but he did it with such grace and class and with such impact. And, and that's why his story did need to be told. He was almost a hidden figure. So, yeah. What did you learn about yourself um, doing this documentary? I learned never give up. We worked on this long and hard, and there were times when it, it almost seemed impossible to get done. And one of the things that kept motivating us was his story. He never gave up. So we didn't, and, and now we have his story to be told. But it's fabulous. I'm so grateful and thankful for you for putting this out there because everyone needs to see it. We agree. Thank you so much. So if you would like one thing an audience member would come away with when they watch this documentary, what would that be? Never give up. Always follow your dreams. You can do whatever you set out to do. Being here tonight for the first time and knowing the subject matter, what are you hoping that you would come away with when you see this documentary? Well, I, I'm hoping a, a, a more clearer and more concise overall picture of, of, of not only the, the man's work but the man himself um, what he was inspired by um, how he faced adversity his his ability to overcome seemingly insurmountable odds because you know what he did and how he flourished in an era that really wasn't conducive to men of color uh, achieving what he achieved so I, my takeaway from this is to hopefully get a clear picture and clear understanding and something that I can apply to my own life uh, whenever I feel like you know the the odds are stacked against me I can look at Paul Williams as a shining example of what you can do you know when uh, even under insurmountable odds or when when nobody gives you the the you know the the um, the leverage in order to do it that you can still you can still achieve and you can still reach for your goals I love his um tenacity and his resolve watching this documentary really opened my eyes a lot but it also showed that we have to take care of our historic buildings and the things that people put before us what are you hoping that maybe when young people see this what kind of spark would inspire in them 
Well, I, just what you said, I think it, having a sense of legacy, having a sense of, you know, being able to understand that this history is your history um, and that, uh, you know, aside from taking away the personal, you know, the, the ability to rise, you know, to, to rise above when the odds are against you, to also understand and appreciate these, these structures and these buildings and, and, the, the, and the, the, the era and the time in which these things were built. <laughs>